of a career highlight victory. Great uppercut got Buck on the knee! Top contender Neiman Gracie. Gracie wins again! Puts his legendary name back on the line. In a showdown with Logan Storm Storley. Beautiful job by Logan Storley. The man who pushed welterweight champ Yaroslav Amazov to the brink. Could he finish it right here, right now? Who will submit? It is all over! Who will survive? And that's it! Bellator MMA, Gracie vs. Storley, Saturday, February 19th, live on Showtime. Bro, our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook are back with an amazing offer. Let's hear it, Jack. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new players a deposit bonus, up to $1,000 in site credits with their first deposit. We had a crazy trade deadline this year. Matt, give me your picks for the East and the West. Who you got coming out? Man, that's a tough call. I think it all depends on healthy. But I'm going to go with the Golden State Warriors and the Brooklyn Nets. I got Brooklyn coming out the East, even though I think Milwaukee looks good with the addition of Ibaka. Uh, they're going to uh, really punish people in the paint. But I'm still going to go with Brooklyn and the Lakers, man. Some kind of way with AD and Braun, I just still think they're going to figure it out. You can head to DraftKings Sportsbook now and place a bet on who you think would come out of each conference. Futures aren't the only type of bets you can find on DraftKings Sportsbook. They have same game parlays, player props, live betting, and so much more. Even if Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still play to win millions of dollars in prizes with DraftKings Fantasy app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code SMOKE when signing up. New players will be given a deposit bonus up to $1,000 in site credits with their first deposit. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Sign up today. Welcome back. All the Smoke 2022 coming to you live from L.A. Mm -hmm. We got one of the young ones that's leading this new wave of music. Very talented. Another one. Album just dropped. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Appreciate y'all for having me. Man. What up, bro? Thank you. Stack. Appreciate what it you doing? How you feeling? Good to see you as well. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Good to see y'all. Appreciate y'all for having me. Appreciate so when you we say, now. when you get introduced now, that sometimes they put that Grammy nominated behind that. How does that make you feel? Shit, it's some fly shit, man. It feel good, <laughs> honestly. Like, you know, but I can't wait till it say Grammy winning. Right. You know, you can't That's fill your, your trophy rooms right. with, uh, with nominations. Nominations, you right. Know? You got to get that hardware. So, like, I'm grateful for it, for sure, but it's time to get the, them gold yeah. trophies, man. Y'all know. You're someone who really understands your platform, and tell me how beneficial social media is with you trying to get your message not only out there in music, but in life and what you're into, your goals. Shit, oh, man, this social media shit done changed my life, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, like... <laughs> It's a motherfucker because, like, it, it's like a terrible thing if you let it overconsume you and mm -hmm. if you let it take up too much of your time. And especially, like, humans are, like, most humans are sheep, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And we're in this era of just massive groupthink. And humans have always been sheep, like, throughout history. But now that we have social media, it gets, like, amplified. You right. get what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, people who are, like, free thinkers and are more, like, open-minded to certain shit are outcasted in a way. Like, mm -hmm. it's some weird-ass shit. It's mm -hmm. like, you can have an opinion on something, right? And this is, like, your opinion. But you'll see, but just the average human being, they'll see, they'll go on Twitter and see a bunch of people who have a, an opinion different from theirs. So they'll be like, oh, I must be wrong since everybody else thinks yeah, right, this way. Right. And they fall into that. Yeah. So. It's a weird thing, but if you just recognize it for what it is and under, it. and not think too deep into it, like and utilize that mm -hmm. shit, it can change your life yeah. in the dopest way. It's like it's like it, you breaking a law if you go against the grain these days. Yeah, you know that what I'm shit saying? weird, bro. To, to, just to be different, like everybody want to wear this. If I want to wear that, well, since you wearing this, you weird. You okay? We 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 gotta we gotta block you. We can't. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that is just stupid. They, and it pay and it my bad to interrupt. Nah, and it, it puts people with influence. And the, everybody motherfucking walking on eggshells yeah. now. Cause yeah. like they so afraid of like cancel culture. Yeah. And I think as a creative, that's like one of the worst things you can do is just not speak your mind freely because right. you're afraid of how it might affect right. your relationships. It might burn bridges or even worse, you know, your pockets yeah. and, and yeah. things of that nature. So it got anybody in creatives or anybody with 
somewhat influenced just trying to be politically correct all the oh, time. Yeah, like, yeah. that shit is like the worst shit Not ever. Not being themselves. For real. Just dropped your second Thanks. studio album. Congratulations from yeah. the Bird's Eye View. What do you want people to take away from this latest project of yours? This is growth, though. A lot of growth on this album from the first, though. Thank you. I appreciate Crazy that. Crazy growth. Nah, thank you so much. For real, that means the world to me. Man, I put a lot of, like, I put a lot of myself into this album, a lot of time. That's why it was like two years and some change in between them. You know, the concept, it's a multi-perspective album. I'm speaking on things that I've seen, things that I've gone through, things that I've witnessed, things that I've seen others gone through. And I'm, I'm bringing you inside this world, you know, from a bird's eye view and painting this picture from a bird's eye view. And then, you know, the double meaning behind it is just to see things from outside yourself, see mm -hmm. things from a broader, a wider lens. Because, like, it's like... Human beings, we tend to think like the whole world revolves around us, you right. know, myself included sometimes. And sometimes we got to just take a step back to see things from mm -hmm. somebody else's perspective mm -hmm. or just from outside of ourselves, you know? Talk about your upbringing. Born in North Carolina, but you moved to Maryland. What was life like and when did music come a part of your life? It, it's dope because, like, down south in, like, Maryland, which is technically, like, the south because it's, you know, below the Mason-Dixon line. But mm -hmm. it's it's really, like, east coast more up north mm -hmm. versus, like, a North Carolina, South Carolina. So I think that's what kind of makes, like, my perspective unique in a way because I, I still got that, like, southern draw, like, that young mm -hmm. southern nigga energy. Mm -hmm. But then, like, in Maryland, like, DMV, we, like, we tend to think, like, we, like, the the coolest niggas on earth. Like, if you know the niggas <laughs> from the DMV, like, they are the, like, you can't be champ. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be lame, because, like, it, it, like you're going to get, like, cut up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to go on you. And so, um, Bama, you know, that's y'all, yeah, the OGs, yeah. be like, oh, yeah, yeah you a Bama, Bama or whatever. Yeah. And so, um, I think the, 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 like, the fashion culture, the, the, the quote-unquote, like, this cool nigga culture, um, and just being yourself really comes from Maryland, but still, like, me visiting, you know, the Carolinas over the summers gave me, like, that real Southern mm -hmm. draw and, and bringing those two worlds together, I think, musically and just perspective life-wise just gives me, like, just a, a multiple way of looking at things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At 15 years old, you decided to give rap, give it, your rap career a try, but it was just a hobby at first. What mm -hmm. made you fall in love with it to the point where that was it, that's all you was going to do? So... I've been rapping since I was like a young, like super young nigga. And I would always just freestyle for niggas. Like it'll be somebody in my neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Nigga getting a little bit of money, whatever. Like be like, yo, rap for him, little bro. Like give me like $5, $10 mm -hmm. here from there. And I knew I had talent because I was like, man, this dude is paying me a little five, ten dollars just to spit for him every day. And that shit look, used to add up mm, for real. Yeah, yeah. And um I always used used to just freestyle and rap, but I dropped my first mixtape when I was 15 years old. And it, my two loves is basketball and rap. Just like every other young nigga right. in the world, right? right. <laughs> no different. I noticed I was a lot more just naturally gifted at making music and rapping than I was at hooping. Like hoops, I was like subpar at best. You know, I was good enough to make the basketball team, good enough to um, score a couple points here and there for the basketball team, but it wasn't nothing special. You know, we come a dime <laughs> a dozen. Y'all know I'm talking to some real life hoopers in a real way at the highest level. And so... um. That within itself, uh, when I drop, when you drop your first mixtape, ain't no going back in, in my yeah. eyes. I was like, okay, this is what I want to apply all my energy mm. and focus into. Because as a kid, I had, I used to want to do both. I used to want to, you know, drop thirty points a game in the NBA. I used to like imagine like my own stats as mm -hmm. a kid, and I was going to be a platinum artist at the same time mm. while still in the NBA. Double up, doubling up, but. I just had to hyper focus all my energy in the music because I felt like that was just my calling. That's what I enjoyed doing the most. You studied artists on uh, YouTube. Yeah. You listened to the music your dad played. Mm -hmm. That was a big influence on the way your, your style is and the way you wanted to rap. For sure, because just I remember my I had teenage parents. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? My parents were teenagers when they had me, so I was I just remember listening to whatever was hot, whatever was the the mm -hmm. cool young nigga shit that was on. And um, which was like, this is like early 2000s, which was like Hove, um, DMX at the time, you know? Yeah. Um, Nas, just people that was just, yeah. just super popping at the time. Yeah. And then I remember the first like album album that came out that really changed my perspective. I think I might have been like five or six years old when it came out, the college dropout. Mm -hmm. That was like the first like complete like body of work I remember like. Oh wow, like I just like how this shit sound. This shit just make me feel good. So 
when um pause um <laughs> but um when I was like ten <laughs> you know just that whatever <laughs> but um yeah that was crazy <laughs> but um. Yeah, like 10, 11 years old, that's when I started just like looking up like lyrics and taking it to a whole nother level in my free time and just going on YouTube and just going on a, a YouTube binge of like Big L, Nas, yeah, yeah. going through like the Big L, Jay-Z freestyle. Mm -hmm. um, just all of these things, just falling in love with the whole catalog. And uh, I think that's what made me like just take my love for the craft, my love for music and just my own pen game to a whole nother level. With your appreciation for what the younger generation will call old school music and obviously being current and, and, and creating the wave in this, you kind of feel like you can be someone who can bridge the gap between generations because there's always that generation once you get to a point where oh, all that music is some bullshit or yeah. they're old and they don't understand. So you kind of feel like you could bring be a, be a bridge to that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, You know, I've heard that before. I never really thought about it like that, to be honest. I just try to like, I don't like go in the studio like, okay, I got to make something for ages 18 through 38, you know? I just I just try to be myself and just create like freely without having uh, any like expectations or any like ulterior motives. Cause I think if you do that, when you go in the studio, like you ask anybody when they make like a hit or like an album, they don't go in there like, okay, I'm going to make a hit today. Or, it just happens. It just happens. So as an artist, I just try to create freely and whatever comes about that. But um, a lot of people have definitely like this, put that 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 label on me as like the person that can bridge between mm -hmm. like youth culture and uh the older generation but um I just try to be myself you know I don't really like put too much thought into right. that you know I right. want I want to ask him this question cuz I know there's so many people that want to rap and there's so many that's in school you prioritize education it was serious to you but at the same time music was blowing it's, it's, it's starting to pop for you for sure. you know what I'm saying for the people, for the youngsters that's in school that, that that's trying to rap, how do you balance both? Man, I honestly, for me personally, I'm just a um, I'm an unequivocal dreamer. I was just like, you know what, oh, man? Excuse me. No. What's the definition of unequivocal? I don't, I don't want to give you the wrong definition, but basically, I might have on honestly used it in the wrong term, but unequivocal. I, because the reason why I say it, because when people come on the show, y'all know, and they say words that I don't understand, Yeah, I ask for the definition because I don't know what it means. Yeah, for sure. So unequivocal, <laughs> let me let me Google it. Let me yeah, give y'all yeah, the yeah, real yeah, definition. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Then, Why don't we do that? Because it, it sounded good when you said it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, know. I, was, yeah. I wanted to unequivocally dream too. So Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, in a way that leaves no doubt. Okay. So I yes. used it perfectly. Right, right, okay, cool. Right. I just had to make sure I wasn't, you yeah. know. Right, you yeah, you on point. So when so I'm an unequivocal dreamer, as in like no doubt. Right. It's gonna you happen. know. Wow, I used that perfectly. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah. But um I just I just had to make sure. But um, I say that to say, um just like it's funny because I'm I'm reaching that point now, right, to where I'm here, but I, it's still a lot more that I want to do and that I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking about this with my homie, like back in the day when I ain't have nothing when I was broke, and I had like three hundred dollars to my name. And let's say if it's like a South by Southwest yeah. in like Texas, Austin, for sure, you know, I would spend like two hundred and fifty dollars on that round trip flight. If I got three hundred dollars to my name, I'm gonna spend two hundred to get me to Texas, and a hundred on food and crash on somebody's couch, mm -hmm. just by me just having the utmost faith and belief in myself. Yeah. Cause I'm like, man, I don't got shit to lose. Let's go. You don't do that without confidence. You gotta have for sure. But now that I've been able to like accumulate like a certain amount of money and like success, it's like a balance because I can't like just go in and just blow all my money mm -hmm. on one thing because I'm playing with a a few more chips mm -hmm. <laughs> than I was before. Yeah. But still not operating from a place of fear for like, man, I can't make a certain radical move because I don't want to lose what I have. But sometimes it take that like a rational thinking and just going with your gut and your feeling to take you to the next level, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I say that to say, that's why I dropped out of college because and I'm not like encouraging anybody to drop out because that was just my path. Right. You know, I, I was chosen for this. This is just something that was just ordained. Right. Um, I believe. And so, um, I was just unhappy when I was in school. I was just going to college because, like, my dad got his GED from prison. You know, mm -hmm. my mom um, had to finish high school because she had me when she was super young. She had to finish high school 
you know, doing night classes and things of that nature. She wants you to go to college. For sure. So this right. is like a bigger than me right. sort of thing. My right. grandma had to drop out of school in the third grade. So I'm like a first generation, like college student. And mm -hmm. I always had like decent grades in school. So um, I was just like, why not? But when I was there, I just wasn't happy because I'm always thinking about this music shit. Every time I'm yeah. doing class, I'm like, this music shit. So I was, um, when I was in college, I honestly wasn't even going to classes like, oh, like that. I'm just in the studio. Like I, I saved some money, got like a little setup had in my dorm room. I knew my roommate mm. was hating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could not stand my ass for real. And um, I was just spending all my time and energy into music while I was in school. So I was like, fuck it, bro. I'm not finna just be stacking up this debt for no reason. I'm just finna just say, fuck this shit. Move to LA. And um, you just gotta know what your path is, yeah. honestly. Like you can't be like, it can't be like a thought like, oh, I wanna try music. And then you just give up everything you working for to go with music. Yeah. At this point, I already had dropped like three mixtapes. Yeah. Like this is just my identity. Like I make music. This is what I got a vision board at this point of like, you know, goals and dreams that I wanted to accomplish in music. Mm -hmm. You just got to know what you want out of life. That's like the advice I give to anybody younger. Mm -hmm. And no rush on it, but then again, figure it out. Because there's so many people in this era, like in, in my generation that's sort of, just going with the flow, don't really know what they want to do, which is all right, but man, don't let Father Time catch mm, up with yeah. you and by the, before you know it, it's like, man, man like, like what the fuck was I doing? Big one facts. of Kobe's quotes, everyone think, makes the mistake of thinking we have more time. Mm. You know what I mean? You never know. Uh, you mentioned vision board and goals and dreams. When you start accomplishing those, how does that make you feel? Crazy. Like, it's, <clears throat> I got a picture of my vision board in my house now and just looking at, I would put like certain people that I wanted to meet on my vision board. Or, uh, I put like, you know, double XL freshmen and, you know, Grammys and all of these things on my vision board. And like even doing like music festivals and visiting like different places. And I'm like, wow, I've been to every single place mm. that I listed on this vision board and, and got paid to that's go there. Crazy. Mm. You know, like that's a whole- word. I paid. wanted to do it, but then I got paid to do it. Paid. Too. Got, that's big. You know, that's why this, this music shit, man, like, I take it seriously because this thing that took me and all the homies I grew up with all across mm -hmm. the world, we get paid to travel the world and perform music. That mm -hmm. The concept behind that is still crazy to me. Yeah. You mean, know what I'm we, saying? We felt the same. You know, we got to travel the world to play basketball. Y'all got whew, crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy. Ball in the hoop. <laughs> crazy. Just, right. just traveling the world. Chosen. And so how does it feel to go to say to say that now? Now you traveling the world and getting paid for your music to not knowing if you're going to play basketball, music, or what? to being in Diddy House and playing your music in the whole house. You got a house full of well-known rappers, rappers you respect. For sure. And they all going crazy when you playing your music. I saw it over social media. Yeah, for what sure. What was that feeling like? Because that's your peers. Yeah, for like, sure. Like for me to, to get props from Kobe, it, like that mean the most because it's my peers. You got Absolutely. a room full of all of the top dogs in the game. Yeah. You playing your music as a youngster and the whole house going crazy. What that feeling like? Man, that was everything. That was um that was a couple years back too. So yep. I really, that was like right before I dropped my first album. So that really put a battery in my back and confidence in me to to release the music, you know, because it's, it's one thing for fans to love you, but to, to truly be an elite artist in whatever field you in, you got to have the respect from your peers. That's yep. why when I just dropped from Bird's Eye View, I've been getting all different artists, you know, support and texting me like, yo, bro, like, this is like a mm. whole level up yes, from sir. the first album. Like, I can hear the difference. Like, your pen game's getting better. Your, your ear for production is getting better. And this is from, like, from extremely high-level artists. And I don't want to name drop them, mm, you know what yeah, I'm saying? But, yeah. like, people that's one of them ones, you yeah. know? So, in a several of them. So, that's what, that means almost just as much as me as the fans loving it, if not mm -hmm. even more, you know, because mm -hmm. that's the difference between a, a, a artist that's in a game and like an elite level, how your peers view you, yeah. you know? Right, right, absolutely. Thanks. You say you grew up um, with younger parents listening to people we came up on, so I'm gonna list the name of uh, musicians. Uh, okay. Tell me something you like about them or an album that sticks out for you. Let's start with uh, Jay-Z. Jay-Z, um, that was probably what I heard the most growing up. You know, just because, like, obviously he's, like, one of the greatest, if not the greatest rappers of all time. Mm -hmm. Like, no argument. Mm -hmm. But at the time, he was he was also the biggest, you know? So this is what I'm hearing. Um, that volume two, mm -hmm. Blueprint. Mm. My, matter of fact, even before College Dropout, Blueprint was, like, that first album I heard as a kid. And I was just like, wow, this just feels 
again, it just feels Amazing, right. Amazing, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, I just, I don't know why I like this shit, but nigga, I like this shit. <laughs> right. And um, that's what made me want to rap. Like, that, probably that album in particular, really, those mm. two albums made me want to rap. So. And, um, yeah, Blueprint is probably that one for me that just, like, every time I even hear that album now I'm driving, it automatically takes me back to, like, what I was doing, me being the kid in the car, where I was at that time. Yeah. You know, I, I was yeah. four when that came out. Yeah. But when I hear, I'm not supposed to have distinct memories when I was four years old. Yeah. Only music can do that. So when I hear that album, I can tell you, like, Man, I remember I had this outfit on that day, mm. and I was at the mall, you, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah mm -hmm. this and that. And um, so that that's, like, huge for me. Nas. Nas. Um, Nas, like, influence-wise, is, like, one of my biggest influence. Um, that's somebody I, like, went back into and studied, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it, I love Illmatic. Everybody love Illmatic. One of the greatest albums of all time. Right. Any genre. Same with Blueprint. Mm-hmm. But um, I like it was written. Per I told, matter of fact, I was just telling Nas this. I told Nas this. I was like, Illmatic is great. It go without saying, but I think it was written is better than Illmatic. Mm -hmm. I think his pen game, his concepts, and I'm probably uh, in a small uh, minority that 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 thinks that. But that album, when I was making um, the Lost Boy, I was listen I was listening to it was written every day just because the standard of of just the penmanship was just so high level to me mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Tupac. Pop. That's um, my goat. That's my goat right For sure. Tupac. If I Die Tonight, one of my one of the most well-written songs, they say pussy and paper and poetry, power oh, and pistols. pistols. Huh. Plotting on murdering motherfuckers, motherfuckers before they get, get you. you. Like, yeah, so. Mm. <laughs> one of the ones, you know? That's one of the ones. Like, mm. and that's the understatement, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pac is just like, it's nothing I can say about Pac that can't be said, that hasn't already been said, mm -hmm. you know? But um, just that, him just being a true, like, author and, and documenter of the times. I think that's what is important as an artist to be, just like a time capsule to showcase what's going on in the world and mm -hmm. and out, you associate albums with years of your life. Like, you probably remember, like, okay, this is the year I had my season, uh, my, my career high, I was dropping the most points every year. Um, that album came out the same year. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how important music is, you know? Um, and so I said, I, obviously, I wasn't even alive when, when Pac died, but um, that his impact is still felt, mm -hmm. you know? Heavy. Biggie. Biggie. Just flow master, you know, um, ready to die. Ready to die is just one of those, like, Pac, Biggie, Nas, Hove, these are like, when I was in my infant stages of, of writing music, like 10 years old, these are the people that, like, stylistically, I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, Who oh, better, okay. Though? Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, Biggie's one of them ones, man. That's why even when I did the leakers, I had to do that 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 kick in the door yeah, freestyle. Yeah, you killed that shit you too. Know? That you shit. I appreciate oh, that. Dude. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. It's crazy because I it. found out about you because I have twin thirteen year old boys. And oh, it's dope. dope. Because like I said, I'm pushing up on forty two, so I kind of stick in my little bubble and I'm like, nah, dad, you got to hear him. And then one, I think one of my homeboys here sent me your uh, your leakers. I was like, oh, and then they're like, next thing I know, oh, he's coming on the show. I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. Oh, so that's, that's crazy dope. How that's I kind of found out about Alignment. who you were, and yeah, it, it's crazy how that worked out. Uh, Lil Wayne, Weezy just take over. Like that 08 Carter 3 era and then no ceilings. And, and Wayne is one of those ones to where he's been doing this shit since he was 12 mm -hmm. years old. Like, and he's only just kept getting bigger. <sighs> like, that's crazy. And still today, like, he's still just, like, knocking shit out. I'm Not like, bro, you gotta love stuff. what you... Yeah, now nah, he killed that shit on Sinister. Yeah, both of y'all killed that nah, shit. I appreciate both that, bro. Thank that you. Shit. I mean, the world to me. But, um, yeah, Wayne is just one of those, like... <sighs> Crazy, like mm -hmm. crazy. Last but not least, Kanye. Yeah, he's one of the the greatest artists of all time. Just yeah. like, matter of fact, I funny enough, man, I met Ye just a couple days ago. I met him a couple times before, but it was just on some dapping up, moving shit. But I actually like got to meet him and have like a a light conversation with him the day my album dropped. Word. So the night that my album dropped, um, shout out Dave Chappelle. Um, we put up on Ye Compound, and Dave Chappelle actually, um, he introduced me to Ye, and we got to have just, you know, small conversation. I got to play him some music. He played me some unreleased music, and it was just like, I got to tell him, like, yo, nigga, like, you probably, like, I know you hear this shit from everybody, nigga, but nah, I ain't even finna lead this motherfucker, and just, because 
but how I used to be, like when I'm around like people I idolize when I first met them, I try to just be not too cool for school, but try not to be like super fanned out. Cause yeah. you know, um, you don't want to see you. You still, we are still peers. These are my idols at the end of the day. Right. But I never wanted to be, you know, like I said, I'm from Maryland. So mm -hmm. the way we look at it, like, man, you on dick too much. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. where I come from is like, nah, don't ever be on dick or don't be too cool. So I'm meeting like people that I idolize. I never ask for no pick. You know, I never pull the phone out, you know, dap them up. It's love. We have a dope convo. It's always like mutual respect. But I was just like, man, like when I start meeting like certain idols, I just gotta tell them what they mean. Exactly. Because uh, like exactly. you just never. And honestly, Kobe, when when Kobe mm -hmm. passed, you know, because I got to meet Kobe a couple times, and it sucked that I never got to tell him like really what like, he meant yeah, to me. Right. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like how big I used to play 2K and just try to score 80 points in five <laughs> minute quarters with this nigga. Like <laughs> I, when I'm bored, that's that's literally what I would do. Just like yeah. just play with Kobe, try to score 80 points in five minute quarters with him. And um, I say that to say I got to tell Ye, like, yo, like, you are my mm, biggest mm, influence. And I yeah. say that. I say whenever I'm in an interview or whenever I'm talking, I was like, I, I, I tell niggas, like, yo, Kanye West is, like, my biggest influence. He's like, yep, you better say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, you better tell that's, him that shit. That's dope. But um, I say that to say when I meet these, you just got to give people their flowers, got man, to, honestly. Yeah, yeah, we big on that. For I like real. That. I like that. Released three mixtapes as a as a teenager. Anxiety in 2014. I'm so anxious in 2016, and I'm so anonymous in 2017. Mm -hmm. Explain those projects and each one you got better. And what was the difference between these three? Hmm. When Anxiety came out, I was 16 years old. Um, it's funny. I got my first studio equipment um, on some janky shit, low key. <laughs> so um, one of my uh, cousins. Um, Stumbled in, into some items, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That uh, that wasn't his It'd or whatever. Like and he broke me off on something, you know. Yeah. And I was able to uh, uh, translate these equitable items into cash, and <laughs> right. I was able to invest that into a little home setup, you right. know. And um, that's how I recorded those first three mixtapes. Okay. Okay. And um, you, you get the language. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And. Um, and so shout out my motherfucking cousin. Yeah, you know who you yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, I gotta break. Matter of fact, when I see that, I gotta break you off something. Yeah, straight up. That, I gotta that. break you off something. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Take all um, the smoke. Oh real. yeah. And and that roommate that was getting annoyed by the music, holla. Holla. <laughs> Hold on now. Don't start including next people. I gotta break <laughs> no, no, off. No, no, no. I don't mean like holla for nothing. Look where I'm at now. You was getting annoyed by the music. Look where he at now. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I remember just um, making these. It was just fun, man. But I was a kid, a teenager at this time. I'm treating these things. Because I remember 2014, like, Good Kid, Mad City probably came out the year or two years after that. And that project in itself got a huge influence on me, especially mm -hmm. at this time. This is when I'm taking music all the way serious, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I see this, and um, I'm treating my album. I'm trying to compete with Good Kid, Mad City. At 16 years old, I'm like, nah, bro, we gotta have our interludes, gotta be right. I'm spending all this meticulous time into uh, production and the sequencing of this mixtape. Like, it's gonna be the one that changed my life. Like, it's gonna get like a million people gonna hear it. You know, I drop it, it do like 2,000 downloads or whatever, but I'm treating it as if it's wow. like my debut album. Yeah. And um, same with I'm So Anxious. I made that in college. That, that was a good time. Um, Man, I was just having fun, yeah, man. Yeah, fun you know making how that it, one. It, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. Well, matter of fact, I'm sure y'all call it. Did, he didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. I'm to sure. UCLA. Oh, yeah. So, dope, yeah. dope, he, dope. He went to college. Yeah, I know. You, you straight to the left, for yeah. sure. I'm sure your college experience was a lot it. different than mine. But still, at the same time, it was still fun. Though. Oh, yeah. Nah, it's still Some fun. Some of the best time of my life. For sure. Yeah. And um, so that just brings me back to college times. And, and that one, like my first mixtape probably did like a thousand downloads on uh, this app called Spinrilla. Spinrilla, yeah. Spinrilla, you know yeah. Spinrilla. Yeah, yeah, that's we used to get all the mixtapes. For like, sure. Yeah. Um, and then I'm so anxious, did like 2,000 downloads. So I'm like, oh man, I'm coming up, I'm getting bigger, yeah. this and that. And then I remember I'm so anonymous, did like 500 downloads. I'm like, oh my, like, what, what am I doing wrong, <laughs> bro? Like, how am I declining, you know? And, um, but I, it gave me the confidence with them. I felt low when I'm so anonymous dropped because I'm like, man, like, did I do something wrong? And is this music shit for me? And, 
you know, like, what's going on? But then I'm like, nah, bro, like, I'm him. And mm -hmm. you got to have that confidence within yourself to just, to even want to do something like be an up-and-coming artist, bro. Being an artist ain't cool when you got a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. Being an artist ain't cool when you drop a mixtape and then do 500 downloads and 200 of them is your friends and family. Right. You know, like, right. people just see the, you got to really have the utmost confidence in yourself and, and belief and just, it's straight up almost craziness and, and, and faith, you know, to even do something like get into music. Because it's like being a, a a starving artist or you want to be a rapper, but you ain't lit yet. You're not professional at it yet. That's probably like the most looked down upon profession yeah, in, everybody gets, in society. everybody gets, a lot of get stuck there. For sure, yeah, yeah. for sure. And um, yeah, just confidence, man. It, it, you know what's funny, man? I don't know why the world don't like to see like confident black males or confident black people. It's just something I noticed. They be like, nah, bro, stay humble. Like, nigga. Well, because we... you know why? That's America's nightmare. For sure. Like, it's something about, you know, and obviously you gotta have humility. You know where you come from and keep that in mind and don't, you know, get too much, you know, dip on your chip and don't yeah. start feeling yourself. It's, it's very important. It's a balance. But even when you have like a little bit of confidence within yourself, like the world as a as a black person, they don't like to see that. They went, nah, bro, stay humble. Mm -hmm. Stay low. And mm -hmm. again, you do got to stay humble. To a certain extent. For sure, to a certain extent. But it's something about that that don't feel right to me, if that makes sense. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I Whenever did. anybody in any field, like an athlete, that's like, like when Floyd was, you know, yeah. boastful. I mean, yeah. this nigga's undefeated. Yeah. Why shouldn't he be that way? A certain NBA players, when they real boastful, they like, nah, you got to stay humble. And mm -hmm. certain artists, when they boastful, they like, nah, stay humble. Like... Nah, bro, we was 400 years of being humble. Yeah. Not to go that far, but it's, the, it's just the truth. You know what I'm saying? Another however many odd years with segregation, we had to be humble. You yeah. know, why shouldn't we have confidence within old. ourselves? Nah, for real. So mm -hmm. it, it takes that. I say all that to say it takes confidence and belief in yourself to even get from what I find to, to get where you want to go. Being that you're human and, and you had went through the stage where you was down on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Did you use, was it good to have social media to continue to promote yourself with during that time? Yeah, for sure. I used to text people and be like, yo, nigga, retweet my shit for me. <laughs> like, repost. I used to do that, like, for the early ones. Then the third one or the second one, I was just like, nah, bro, people going to support it. I'm trying to just organically gain mm -hmm. uh, supporters and, and followers, what I found out. Like, before I'd just be like, yo, text all the... You used to try to cheat code it, like, text whoever it was in my phone contacts. I don't give a fuck. If it was a, a pretty joint, the baddest joint in the mm -hmm. school, whoever, I'm going to text you, be like, yo, retweet this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'll text the, the, the popping girls, you know what I'm saying, who I went to school. we like, yo, you trying to do a video, like, mm -hmm. with my song in the background, whatever, whatever. And, you know, because I was just a cool nigga, like, they, they would fuck with it. Mm -hmm. And so I would just try to utilize my classmates, you know, because if it's like the, 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 the like, the bad, the local bad joint, she going to have, like, a couple thousand followers. Everybody watching mm -hmm. her and what she's doing. Right. It might be... She might even have like some cousins that follow her that's like out of state that, you know, she can tell that see my music and learn about it from there. So yeah. I just looked at it like I ain't leaving nothing off the table. Yeah, six you know? degrees of separation. For sure. Connected Man, yeah. it, it's really yeah. like it's not even weird. It's crazy how like mm -hmm. when you're like in alignment with everything, how just things just start okay. connecting. Goes. Explain to us how, how uh, YBN mm -hmm. came about. You guys had a nice little run before you kind of went different directions in 2020. For sure, for sure. So, um, Namir, I, I sort of joined, like, the YBN thing, like, later. They was already, like, doing their yeah. thing. So, Namir and Jay, um, they met each other through Xbox. Mm -hmm. And um, I was never big on a game like that, to be honest. I just play, I play 2K and Madden, nigga, just the regular shit. Yeah. And um, but they were like they had like a clan on um <laughs> on Xbox for real. Jack got one too. Oh, that's Call hard. Yeah. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. And it, that's what the 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 world is. That's mm -hmm. where the future is, Game. honestly, for sure. Mm -hmm. And they was ahead of their time with that. Shout out to them. And um, it, it's funny now. Mill was actually um my brother Simba, who locked up right now. He rocked with Simba's music heavy, and um. Me and Simba would do music together, so Namir just reached out like, yo, like, I rock with you. And we were just linking up. Whenever he was, like, in Maryland, I'd just link up with him, you know what I'm saying, make sure he was good and all that. And uh, whenever we was in the same city, we would just automatically link up. And then he was like, bro, like, you, you got to do this YBN thing. And I was just like, nah, I kind of just, I got my own thing going. But then um, 
it just made sense, you know, at, at the time, honestly. And um, but I was just around him, like just just as the homie. You know, I never would like pitch myself as an artist. Never would be like, nah, bro, I'm trying to get on, bro. You know, I make music too. Like niggas ain't even know I rap, you know. And um, that's always gonna be a part of my legacy. You know, mm -hmm. I, I look back at those times as I mean, I had a lot of fun with them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I still talk to Namir, still talk to Jay like all the time. Namir was just at my um release party, matter of fact. You the only one ain't beefing with nobody. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, for the, sure. you the only one cool with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. for sure. I I just keep it off the net. You yeah, know what I'm saying? But nah, I don't right. got no problem with nobody. Yeah. But um keep it moving. Yeah, everybody got their own thing, man. Yeah. Like that shit is it's funny though at the end of the day. It's, it's entertaining. enough out there for all y'all. Man. man, for sure. It's entertaining as fuck though, honestly. It is. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> just dropping your second project. When you go back to May 2018, you dropped your first single, Introduction to the World. How you look back on that first single? Man, it was just fun because the realm of the unknown, you know, and it did like a million views in a day. I was just like, damn. It's like you seeing yourself, quote unquote, like blow up in real time. Mm -hmm. And those were like, not the most fun, but just like your first time doing everything. Like y'all remember y'all first time, you know, being in LA or going to, you know, London or all these places I'm sure y'all been to a thousand times over. Um, I see you always on some flat stack. You be a, ooh, you. That's him. Man. That's him right there. Hey, you only yeah. get one shot at this, man. Uh, man, for up. real. Got to live get... it up, for sure. And um, I say that to say, um, it, it was just fun, man, honestly. Like, just looking back at that, because I was still in college at that time. Mm. When I got a million views in a day, I yeah. was like, oh, I'm out of here. You the man sure. on campus. I was, all, oh, I was already dropped out. I was already not going, but that's when I all the way made my mind. I'm like, yeah, I'm for sure not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a million views. That's all I always said is like, as soon as I get a million views, I'm, I'm out. out. Here, that's that's yeah. all I need is a million views mm -hmm. and I'm out. So. And when I got it in a day, I was like, yeah, Sharsky. And it, and it came in a day. For sure. That's tough. Mm -hmm. The label process. Mm -hmm. Atlantic Records. Yep. Shout out to Atlantic. That's Shout out to partners. Atlantic Records. It's yeah. one of our partners as well. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how did that come about in that partnership? Um, Let me see. Atlantic, you know, I... um, hmm, Let me go back, go back. So, uh, it, you know, now, Mir and Jay was already signed yeah. uh, to Atlantic, so it just made the, the most sense. And mm -hmm. honestly, Atlantic is probably, like, the number one label for rap, for, like, hip-hop. And honestly, it's stats to prove that, you know? But right. um, Julie Greenwald, Mike Kaiser, Dallas, shout out all of them. Kaiser, yeah. shout out Kaiser. Yeah, yeah, Dallas. for sure. Yeah. They they was just, because I, I met with every, you know, every label wanted to sign me. But um, they were just one of the most, like, enthusiastic, the most, um, like, personal, just like, yo, like, we, we like, whatever it takes, like, we got to do it, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And um, I just look at enthusiasm at the time, and they were like probably like one of the most enthusiastic, and it just made the most sense. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them for sure. Mm -hmm. The debut album, how long was the process? Do you write or do yeah. you go off the top of the head? I write. When it's an album, like when it's album stuff, like I like to write, because I go off the top with like some records. Sometimes like for a hook, I'll kind of like have mercy. I just like freestyle that. Just that vibe. Yeah, it just depends on what the vibe is, honestly. but. When I write, my my thoughts are a little more organized. You know, I'm a little more like on topic versus like when I'm off top, I just say whatever it yeah. is that's coming to my mind, which is a, a dope. dope thing, yeah, you know. Still dope, yeah. But it, it just depends on the type of vibe the song is. But nine times out of ten, I I just like to write down my thoughts and my ideas because it's just more like organized, you know. You and Wayne, y'all was in the studio together when y'all made that. Oh uh, no, I sent that over to him. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so you ain't never seen him. Yeah, I, in I met. Element? Yeah. Um. It's funny, we ended up connecting because he had his um his Young Money podcast, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yo, like, whatever you need, youngin, like, send that joint to me and you get it back the same day. And um, I waited that's like 10... That's crazy, too. Yeah. That's Wayne. I waited for sure. That's Wheezy. Mm -hmm. I waited like 10 months before I sent him the song because it just dawned on me. I'm like, hey, bro, this nigga Wayne told me to send him something. I still ain't <laughs> sent him the nigga. I'm bullshitting. Right. So I just went through a bunch. I'm trying to find him the perfect song, but right. I'm like, I might already got it. So I went through um, records, and um, it was Sinister, the joint I had with Hit Boy. I just had that joint in Tuck, so I'm like, I think Wayne. Mm. I was in the studio with my boy Ian. I was like, you think Wayne to sound good on this? Shout out my boy E. And he was like, yeah, nigga, I think this nigga sound dope on this. And I just sent it to him, and he sent it back in 12 hours. Shout out Hit Boy. That's Before like, the day even ended. That shit hard. 
thank you. The video I appreciate hard it. too. Nah, thank mm-hmm. you. Nah, it's yeah. funny, man. When I'm editing, when I'm looking at the the video edit and I see Wayne rapping, I'm like, I'm like nigga, that's Wayne, bro. <laughs> that's one of those moments, like, because you know how it is when you in it, you it's like you gotta have a tunnel vision of like, all right, we knock this out. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it pushing. Keep it going. Try to get to a higher level. No pun intended. Keep working and things of that nature. But it's certain moments. What I've been learning more, especially like the last couple months, you just got to boost side, mm-hmm. just take in a moment and just have a moment of just like gratefulness. Uh, and not that I've ever been like ungrateful, but just taking that gratitude to a whole nother level. And that was one of the moments I'm like, wow, bro, I got a song with I don't Wayne. mean to keep going, I'll keep it. No, you got it. In the video, mm-hmm. he's singing your part word for word. Yeah. Like when you go back and look at that, like crazy. I was, I don't know if you watch the video, you'll notice, like. Yeah, I see you looking at it. I him. smile. I'm yeah. watching him. I, I, I get the smile. Like oh, I couldn't even hide it on camera. You know, that's Wayne rapping my my lyrics that I wrote down. You know, and you know he did the video a lot of times. You know, if you know Wayne, he ain't doing no video. No, so he won't show up on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I done heard a bunch of. He's like, yo, you got Wayne to show up. Like he'll be showing up on niggas. You know, Thanks. so it was just a lot of respect and love for him to even just. Bless me, you know, being a part of it. You know, that's... That was this man founded Drake, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and Nicki yeah. Minaj. Like, what in the world? One of the Shout best out Wayne. Do Shout out Wheezy. Wait, on me for real. Um, from your vision board to actually making it happen, Freshman XXL 2019. Yeah. Amongst Roddy Rich and mm-hmm. Meg Thee Stallion, to name a few. What was that experience like? That was dope. Every artist... Coming up, you want to be on the cover of Double XL. Every artist, I I definitely had it on my bill, on my um Double XL freshman list. I even said 2019, Mm -hmm. I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm a 2019 Double XL freshman all day, and um and I got my class is mean. By the way, we got I got a mean class like the Megan The Stallion, like it's some real stars on there, Mm -hmm. like all the way. So um that was definitely a, a a bucket list thing I always wanted to do. You hit the road last year and got a chance to visit a bunch of HBCUs, uh, something me and Jack want to do. Uh, what was that like? And what was the thought process behind that? Yeah, so my main thing was I wanted to just, um, hmm, I wanted to just play my music for the people to figure it out, like, to just get, like, real opinions on it. Because everybody who I play my music for, they're my peers. They're, like, superstar artists. You know what I'm saying? So they have an elevated ear, if that makes sense. I like playing my music for virgin ears, mm-hmm. people who aren't in entertainment, who ain't in the music, because they just like, either I like this song or I don't like it. Mm. I'm playing it for like other artists. They're going to be like, I like this song. I feel as though you could add more, you know, they're more technical with it versus like you just playing it for fans and people that just there just to hear it. They just like, oh, I like this song or I don't like this song. You, you know, it's more Water simple up. like that. And... um. I just wanted to play it for all people and give these uh, the students like an experience they ain't going to forget. Like, yo, I remember when Corday pulled up to our college, right. talk, ch- I would chop it up with them for a little bit, give whatever game, whatever knowledge I got, because like, I'm just the same age as all these. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't got all the answers, and I'm not going to ever pretend like I got all the answers, but whatever knowledge I got, if I can just be a light, be a little bit of motivation, then I walk away happy. Mm-hmm. And... um. Even more than that, I got to, you know, just sit down, play them the music from from top to bottom, from start to finish, and just to get like real life reactions and how they felt about the music. And that put a battery in my back to where I know I was like, okay, like, okay, this gonna be one of them ones. Okay, this one of them. Mm. Ah, okay. Like it it, it it is ready, you know? Yes, sir. Social justice. Uh I was telling, we was talking about this recently. Um I remember my first time actually seeing you and meeting you was when I was going through the stuff with George Floyd, my yeah, brother Minneapolis. in Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. In Minnesota. And for me, it meant a lot to see to see you and her in this crowd, just like everybody else, no security. Yeah. There for the cause. And, for you know, sure. it was personal for me because it was somebody who was my real friend. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? But to see you there, see y'all there, I think it meant the world uh, uh, for me to have y'all support, man. But how important it for you or is it to you for people to stand up and to speak their mind on social justice issues or issues that, you know, that pertain to Black Lives Matter? It goes back to what we were saying earlier, like, you just got to speak on what you believe in. Right. You know? And I used to always go to, like, different protests and 
when I was like in high school and in college, like I remember going to Michael Brown protest in mm-hmm. DC. I remember, you know, Philando Castile and like a thousand other names, unfortunately. Right. You know, right. so the only difference now is that I just have a platform. So I'm just always gonna speak upon what is real, mm-hmm. you know, and what I feel and what I connect to and just seeing black people get killed by the police mm. still. This is like a a hundred year, four hundred year concept. You know, the fact that we still talking about it is is ridiculous for lack of a better word. Right. And um it's it's fucking crazy, dog. And um, you know, obviously condolences, you know, I know right, that hit bro. home for all of us, but it's different when you actually know the person, yeah. you know? And um I say that to say, yeah, just just doing it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And I noticed a lot of entertainers was doing it because it's like the cool thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like what's popular opinion now. But you know what? The way I look at it is, I don't even give a fuck if you're doing it for pure and for pure reasons. Reason. As long as you because doing, as yeah. long as you, you know what? Your platform, right. whether it's pure, it's coming from a pure place or you're doing it from your personal game or not, it's still shedding light on something that needs to be shed light on. So like, fuck it. You know, because mm-hmm. I used to get mad about it. Like, man, these niggas is like, you know, I was, quote, I hate this term, I was, quote, unquote, woke in 2013, yeah. 2015. It wasn't cool back then. If right. you was woke a little bit in 2013, 2012, you was a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was not, you wasn't getting no cooch being woke in 2020, right. tw- 2012, whatever year it was. No, you can woke yourself into some pussy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? For real. Like, for real, it's fucked up. For real. Like, that's facts, you just got, shit. for real. That's facts. And um, oh, shit. and not that people. Hopefully nobody do it for that, right? But it's just the truth. Nah, but, that's true. But um, I just always like to speak upon things that I just connect with. Like I was young, reading about W. E. B. Du Bois, reading mm-hmm. about Marcus Garvey, mm-hmm. reading about Huey Newton. I was a a little nigga, ten years old, reading these things. I used to read Harry Potter all the times, and my stepdad was like, "Yo, if you can read Harry Potter, you can read, you know, books on Thurgood Marshall." W.E.B. Du Bois, mm-hmm. um, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. So I'm 10 years old getting all this knowledge. So I'm like the little nigga in school with the with the dashiki on <laughs> and the koofy, you know what I'm saying? Like, and um, back then it, it wasn't cool to, right. to have an understanding. You know, it's this James Baldwin quote to be even, in, and I might be misquoting it, but to paraphrase it, it's like to be like significantly aware and to be just a little bit socially conscious and to be black in America is to be enraged all the time. Yeah. And um like if you smart and you know what's going on, you mad. For sure. Like, but um yeah, it's a it's a um like I said, I'm just glad more light is being shed on it. Even if it's coming from an impure place from right. people, like, fuck it. It's, at least it's a light. conversation. It's mm-hmm. light. You know? We coming down. We wish we had more time, but we, we coming down to the end. Uh, mm-hmm. We got quick hitters here. So the first thing to come to mind, let us know. I'm going to put you on the spot right here. Okay. Use all the smoke in a quick freestyle. All, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I make a couple millions from the bars I wrote. And if a nigga got a problem, we want all the smoke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's simple. Yeah. He ain't need four Quick, bars, just two bars. You know? Quick. Top five lyricists of all time in your mind, in your opinion. Hmm. I'm going to give top five artists. Because uh, I value yeah. artistry and good music over just rap, rap, right. rap, rap. Okay. Um, let me see. My top five artists of all time. Got to go Ye, Kanye yeah. West. Um, Got to go Ho. Mm-hmm. And this is just my... Personal. Yeah, yeah of course. So, this. Gotta go. So my top five. Gotta go Kanye West. Yay. Um, gotta go Hove. Mm-hmm. Give me Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Give me Nas. Mm. Nasty. Give me Drake. Nice, nice top five. I like. If you stuck on an island, three shows or movies you'd have on repeat. Am I by myself? No, you could you could have a guest if you'd like. <laughs> okay. If I'm by myself, I'm watching, I'm gonna get that hub on. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> shit, I'm bored if you what else I'm gonna do. I'm on a motherfucking island. I'm on the island, boy. I need give me one channel. Shit. <laughs> give me one nigga, I'm breaking down for now. I'm fucking with you. Uh probably Friday. Okay. Um uh, trading places. I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, and and uh, Dave Chappelle show. The yeah. Chappelle show Can't all day. Wrong. He was just 
talking about that shit earlier yeah. today. That's one of the best shows of all time. Or Boondocks. Dave Chappelle show, Boondocks, and Friday. Those three right there. Yeah. In the hub, if I got a fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't can't forget about the hub. Forget about the hub. Give the hub. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Okay. Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Tupac. Um, let me see. Michael Jackson, Tupac. That's a mean two. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, it just depends on who paying, right? Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me see. Um, you got it now. You good. Right, right. That's a good two right there. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh. Kobe. Yeah. Got to add Kobe up there. Yeah. Um, I to put Hove up there. You know the the five hundred thousand yeah. the dinner with Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. They, yo, somebody needs to make like an actual parody skit of Hove. Like, yo, man, why ain't you take the five hundred, yo? <laughs> like, <laughs> no question about that. Right. Um. Damn. Michael we, Jackson. Kobe, we gotta bring Tupac. some giants at the table. I just can't yeah. have all niggas at yeah, the table. Yeah, you know, so yeah. we gotta have some feminine energy. Yeah. And um. Hmm. Ah. I guess Oprah. <laughs> you know? Oprah. Oprah. Drop Winner. Game. For sure. Rub punt rub my elbows with the big. They're gonna be like, yo, what, why, what's all niggas here? You know what I'm saying? That's how it's supposed to be. If you could have one guest on All the Smoke, who would it be? But before you answer the question, mm-hmm. you have to help us get your answer on here on the show. Ooh, that's good. Okay. Um, huh. I would love to see um hmm, all the smoke. You know a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm trying to get somebody that, because I'm a man of my word. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I want to yeah, have, okay. I want to get somebody that like okay. I can for sure call. Yes. Um, I would say Dave Chappelle, but he don't really do. I don't want to promise, over promise and under deliver. Yeah, but you can try that because you know he gonna he smoke too, so for sure. it, it'll work. Once you put the press on, let me know, then I'll text him right after you. We can put the full court press yeah. on. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, huh. All the smoke, who I want to see on here. Mm-hmm. I just noticed y'all ain't like now one. Joint cake. I mean, we had one right roll for you. Oh, damn. That, I'm on my fast. Let me, when, when I finish my fast, yeah. I need the Viola. I need the seven. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take that with me yeah, now. <laughs> I'm going to take that with me now. My, yeah. Matter of fact, my album out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you might as well fire that shit up yeah. just in honor of your album. No, no, no. Peer no, pressure, no, peer no, pressure, no, peer no, pressure. No, no, no. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Next time I'm up here, I'm deaf. I'm coming with one. Okay. I'm coming yeah, with one. Yeah, Guaranteed. Okay, I like it. I like it. I'm still locked in. Like, I'm finishing up. I'm low-key working on a whole another body of work right now, like, as we speak. So when I got this joint, it's it's, go time. It's now it's go time, like, for real. When it's time to kick it, let us know. All day. And we appreciate you coming, man. We can't not let you leave. Uh Uh-huh. Having some All the Smoke gear, bro. Oh, come on. I appreciate that. Thank y'all. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Swag it out however you feel, when you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Oh, some high-quality shit, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we ain't going to fuck around. We ain't going to fuck around. Oh, no, y'all ain't. And y'all got the label on it. Yeah, yeah, we ain't fuck around. I got to get y'all some gear, too. Some high-level gear. Yeah, I need that. I need that. All day. We need it. We need it. All the Smoke dot store. Mm-hmm. Bird's eye view. Mm-hmm. Out now. Go get it. Man, Corday, we appreciate you, yeah, bro. Nah, Wish we had more time. We got to have you come back, man. Yeah, nah. Thank love. you, sir. Can't wait. Yeah, nah. Yes, sir. Sure. That's a Real wrap. Love. All the smoke. Mm-hmm. Check out the album from a bird's eye view. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. Peace. Peace. It is just as simple as someone being able to see it, to see that it's possible. This is a story of hope. Okay, I see you, baby boss. How do I look? Like a badass captain who knows what's up. Black culture is still relevant, and now we can show people something from this lens. All right.